ready for a change, but the thought of moving or updating stresses you out, then you're not alone. The trick is in decluttering. It's out with the old so you can bring in the new on today's Sofla Home Project. Welcome to SoFlo Home Project, I'm Elena Capra. Going through all the things that you've accumulated over time can be totally overwhelming. In order to keep your sanity, you must look at the big picture and take things one room at a time. Today, we'll go over tips for selling furniture and decluttering, what to look for when buying new pieces, tips to incorporate existing furniture pieces, ways to update any room with a new layout, and much more. So when we talk about getting rid of the old, a very big part of that is getting rid of the old furniture. But there could be several ways to do that and sometimes you may not know where those pieces fit in. So you can consign, you can sell online or on apps, donate, and of course, when all else fails, haul away the junk. Consigning is to be for the furniture that holds the most value. This could be name brands, very well known or iconic pieces, or even great antiques. So anything of great value, you may wanna think about consigning for getting the most bang for your buck. Couple of things to think about. When you are going to consign furniture, you always wanna make sure that the contract with the consignment shop is fully understood. You're gonna get a certain percentage of that sale, usually somewhere between 40 to 60%. It could vary based on the shop itself. And you also wanna make sure you ask the questions. How long will it be on the floor before you mark it down for additional sale price? And just be really familiar with that. And another note on that is a lot of the times if you need a means of getting the piece to the consignment shop, a lot of the consignment stores offer usually a third party delivery service. So there may be an additional fee to do that. So when you are consigning, think wisely. It's gonna be for those pieces that you think are gonna bring you the most value for the money. Probably the most popular way to get rid of furniture and also make a little cash for it is selling on apps or online. The key thing is to have great photos. They say a picture is worth a thousand words and it certainly is when you're selling online because if you have a bad photo, no one is going to really look at the piece. So you kind of have to sell it like a great ad. So having about five photos of the piece usually is going to be great. And you're going to want to make sure you get a photo of the profile, the side view. You're going to want to get the front view, maybe a top view, and of course, a view of the back of the furniture. Remember, when you're photographing with your phone, you wanna get all details. You wanna make sure you're showing the piece in its best view. And another great thing is to think about photographing it in great lighting. Just like taking a picture, bad lighting equals bad photos. Just as important as the photo is the description. You wanna keep it short, but you wanna get all the important information in. So you wanna mention, perhaps if it's a name brand, what that brand is, if it's a specific piece of furniture, if it has drawers or other features, list those features, and then maybe even add a photograph of those features of the drawer opened up so you can see that. Uh, if there's a certain piece or accessory that's part of it, show that in the description as well as in your photos. And you wanna list the condition, is it in good, fair, perfect, never used, still in the box. You wanna make sure you list those things so people know what they're getting, there's no dispute. And if there is damage to the piece, take a photo of that too and show that in the pictures. So the first two ways of getting rid of furniture is to bring some extra cash to your pockets, but sometimes there's a way to do that, which is just something that helps others, and that's donating furniture pieces. And it's something that I love to do when it's a piece that you just don't know if it's going to bring any resale value that's enough and you really wanna give it new life and help others at the same time. So I love donating pieces. There are a lot of great organizations within Dade and Broward that you can donate your pieces that will even include complimentary pickups. So it costs you nothing and it brings so much to others and it's also tax deductible. So the last way is when you've decluttered, you've sold everything and there's just a lot of leftover junk and how do you get rid of it all? Well, there's a lot of great junk hauling companies that can even sometimes come same day. Having these companies that haul the junk away is the perfect last step to getting that house clean and either ready for your move or for your 
redecoration. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, transform your space by choosing furniture wisely. We recently met with a homeowner that got so tired of their accordion shutters that they got rid of them on their own and they wanted to change out their windows with new hurricane impact glass. We're going to take a look at how everything turned out on today's SoFlo Home Project. Welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra, and today is all about out with the old, bringing in the new, and before the break we talked about ways to sell and declutter and get rid of your furniture and junk. And now I want to share with you some of my favorite tips on ways to smartly purchase your new furniture, as well as some things that you should look for in terms of quality when purchasing new things. Okay, so first things first, when you are setting out to purchase new furniture, whether it's in a showroom, in a store, or even online, you want to make sure you have a sketch of your room with all of the measurements, okay? This is so important in making sure that the things that you choose are going to fit. You're just wasting time if you don't have the measurements with you when you go to any store. So take a picture of it on your phone so you have it handy for reference whenever you need it. You may do an impulse furniture buy, you wanna have that there. So have the measurements, have a tape measure. Having a tape measure with you is so important. Even if it's one of those really small ones that could just fit in your purse or pocket, that definitely is something you want because of course it'll make things a lot easier. The next thing you want to also think about bringing with you is some swatches. I like to have swatches of the paint and you can actually get these larger swatches from most paint companies. So just so you know, if you don't want to fiddle with the little ones, you can order the larger ones, which are great. You want to have some samples of perhaps a finish of some furniture. If you're looking at things, you could order these. Good to have a little bit of a wall covering sample, some fabric, some carpet. Always invest in getting the samples. Sometimes it's a purchasing thing. It may cost a dollar or two, two, three, four dollars to get it online. Get the samples. It makes it much easier. Now let's talk a little bit about construction of furniture and things you should look for. I thought it would be good to start with wood because you don't need to know every type of wood, but you should know three types when it comes to buying your furniture. Solid hardwood, you're gonna have veneer, and then you're gonna have particle board or composite wood. Solid hardwood is the best type. That's gonna be the wood that lasts the longest. If you're buying a sofa, a solid frame, if you're buying a table, solid hardwood, those are key words of knowing it's a quality piece. A veneered wood is just sort of like your next step from solid hardwood. And then lastly, you have particle board slash composite wood. Those are other keywords you might hear, or even uh, press board. There's a lot of different words that might describe that. And those are gonna be more inexpensive ways to build the furniture. So again, you have to think about there's different ranges when it comes to quality. So you gotta think about those things. Now, one other thing when it comes to upholstery, you want to look at things like this, cushions of a sofa or chair. Reversible cushions, those are awesome. Check to see if it's got reversible cushions. The reason that's such a great thing is it adds years to your furniture because you could flip the cushions in time. If something gets stained and it's not treated and you can't get it out, that's like life-saving, right, when it comes to your furniture. So reversible cushions is a great thing. You could look for very fine details when it comes to good upholstery. You wanna make sure that the fabric, the seams are well done, that the pattern matches up like this. Basically looking for finer furnishings is like buying a very beautiful purse. You wanna make sure all the stitching and details are just right. So the higher quality of the furniture, the more perfect those details are. So I've got a whole lot more tips when it comes to using existing furniture pieces, but first let's see what Tech Renata from FHIA has for us today. Normally when we meet with homeowners that have accordion shutters, they literally have accordion shutters. Uh, in this particular circumstance with this family, they were so tired of how the accordion shutters operate or didn't operate that they got rid of them on their own and they wanted a solution. So in looking at all the options, of course, hurricane impact glass was really important and protecting their home and their family was really important. Uh, energy efficiency was really high on their list. But we also wanted to make sure we were making the best decision cosmetically as well. If they're going to make this investment in the home, we really want them to be really proud of the choices they made. So we went and change the style a little bit where right now they have a single hung window which means it opens from the bottom and it gives them uh, this divider here in the middle and obviously 
they have a horizontal bar across where the window opens and closes. So uh, we wanted to change the look and really update the look of the home. So we went with something that's a three section sliding window, which will give them more of a picture window in the center and then give them a flanker that will open and another one that will open on the side. So I'm excited for them to see uh, how that decision turns out. Now that this opening is installed and everything's completed, the homeowner's really excited about how it turned out from a cosmetic standpoint. They love the new look of the home. We also were able to address a really concern for all of us, which was in case of a fire, the family needs to be able to get out safely. Whereas the last windows that were in here didn't give them a lot of clearance when they opened the window, it was difficult for them to get out. So with this window, we gave them the picture window they wanted in the middle, but the sides slide all the way open so you have this full clearance if you want to get out or if it's an emergency and you have to get out quickly, it gives you the adequate space to get out. We were able to accomplish everything we were looking for, update the look of the home cosmetically, provide better hurricane uh, protection, and make the home more comfortable and save money off our utility bills. So uh, the installation went perfectly and I know they're really happy with how everything turned out. Back to you, Elena. Thanks, Tat. Okay, you guys, so we talked about buying new stuff, but what if you wanna keep some old furnishings? I find we get the most questions of people asking, how do I incorporate an existing piece into new decor? So I got a couple quick tips. First, you might wanna try putting it in a different room. If you're remodeling or redecorating, try like a certain piece, say it's a certain side table, maybe it doesn't work in your new living room. Putting it in a different spot in your home can make it feel like a completely different piece. So sometimes just as simple as relocating gives it a whole new look. Now, say you have a great piece, the bones are good, it's really pretty, but maybe the color or finish doesn't match. Give it a little makeover, changing the finish, perhaps reupholstering it, or even embellishing it if it's an upholstered piece with some nail heads and just giving it a little bit of a different vibe. Or you could simply change out the hardware on a piece of furniture and give it a whole new look with a different finish. So lots of great and simple DIY ways that you could easily change your furniture or have it professionally done if it's a little bit more extensive of a project. So definitely giving it a facelift gives it a whole new look. And then when in doubt, accessorize it, okay? Adding pillows to any sofa, any bed, anything existing makes it automatically look great. Coming up next, see how new furniture can improve your room's layout. Welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and we're continuing talking about getting rid of the old, bringing in the new. We've talked about selling your furniture. We've talked about things to look for when buying new. And now we thought it'd be a good time to talk about setting up the room and specifically the bedroom. I find this is a room where most people ask us, how do you know which wall to set up the bed on? What's the right layout? Well, let me go through some different layout options depending on the type of room you may have and hopefully this will be helpful for your own room setup. So we'll start with the small bedroom. So if it's a small room, perhaps a secondary bedroom, a kid's room, a den where you're incorporating a bed, in rooms like that, it's always best to try to get the largest part of the bed against a wall. So when you can do that, you eliminate a few extra feet needed for clearance. So when you get one of those beds up against the wall with that longest part of the bed against the wall, not just the head of the bed, that really helps maximize space. And if you are trying to fit two twin beds, having them both against the wall really allows you to have enough space in the room. Now in more of a medium sized bedroom, I like to go with the classic layout, which is your bed against the wall with the two nightstands and then the heaviest piece of furniture like by heavy, I mean the greatest like look, like the most bulkiest piece is your dresser. And that's gonna be right across from the bed to balance out the space in the room. And of course, that's always the ideal area to have a TV. Most importantly, when you're setting up the room, you need to think about the way you use it. So if you do like to watch TV in bed, having that set up is ideal. If you like to read in bed, you need to make sure you have the appropriate lighting on each side with the nightstands and lamp. So now in the larger bedrooms, more of the master suites, there you're gonna have a couple of more options when it comes to your layout. So we do that classic layout with the bed, the two nightstands, and of course, maybe the dresser. But in these rooms, since there's so much more space and width to the room, 
you may do more of an asymmetrical layout where you have your bed, dresser, nightstands, and then on the other side, perhaps it's a seated area, perhaps it's a little bit of nook with some chairs or a sofa, or a little home office or additional storage like another bureau and dresser. So I know that rooms can vary in size, but hopefully this is just a good guide to get you started in picking the appropriate layout for the rooms in your home, specifically the bedrooms. Next on SoFlow Home Project, Take note, I'm giving you my top furniture pieces to splurge on. Welcome back to Soflo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and today is all about out with the old furniture and in with the new, how to declutter, and then once you do that, what to put back in. So that brings us to selecting your furniture. And when it comes to selecting the furniture, there's definitely ways of knowing when to save and when to splurge. So my first splurge item is the dining table. It doesn't necessarily need to be your dining chairs, but the table is something that will usually be the piece that stays with you through perhaps a move, a remodel. That's one of those pieces that when you invest in a good dining table, it will last a very long time. Another piece of furniture that you are going to splurge on is the main sofa in your home, whether it's in the family room or living room. That gets probably some of the most use in any home and should be one of the items that you invest in. What you're gonna want is something with a good quality, well-constructed frame, great cushions. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure that if you are investing in a sofa, that's something that is going to take the wear and tear. When you get a good piece of quality furniture, a sofa of quality construction can last up to 25 years. All right, so the next splurge item is the mattress. It's the mattress that you sleep on every day. We spend about one third of our lives in bed, so you should be comfortable and get a good night's sleep. That's a piece, again, that should last at least eight years. You want to make sure you have a good one. And just a couple of tips. A lot of places do have a trial period with mattresses, so sometimes you are able to try out the firmness of a mattress and see if you like it and find that right one for you since it is a big investment. And probably the most relevant splurge item right now is the home office chair. We are all working from home. You spend a lot of time in a desk chair throughout the workday. So you want to invest in one that is both ergonomic as well as comfortable and why not beautiful as well. There are a lot of pieces that you could put into your home decor that are things you could save on. Best places to save money are gonna be small accent furnishings, side tables, side chairs, things that are inexpensive that you don't mind parting with in a few years. Also, area rugs. If you're not willing to put a big investment into a carpet, you've got young children, pets, high traffic areas in the home, Go with area rugs that can be easily replaced and are inexpensive. There's a lot of amazing rugs that look super expensive that aren't. Light fixtures are another way that you can save here or there when you need to in the budget. Of course, it makes sense to get a beautiful light fixture that might be an investment piece, but we've got so many lamps and floor lamps and table lamps in a home that that's a good area to find items that are well-priced but sometimes look very expensive. So we've got some great pieces you can save on, some you can splurge, and then there is one particular category that I think works in both save and splurge, and that is your artwork. So based on your overall budget, if you're into collecting art or not, you can definitely save by getting inexpensive pieces that look beautiful or even creating your own art with framed photographs or sentimental items, or you can splurge and invest and build an art collection. So that one kind of goes either way based on your preference. So I hope that you guys got some great info on saving and splurging and purchasing new furniture, selling it, decluttering, all those things if you're moving or remodeling that definitely help you get a little more bang for the buck and a more beautiful home. So now let's see what Hunter Frankie from SoFlo Health has for us tomorrow. Hunter, what's up? 
Elena, the SoFlo Health SoFlo Home Project connection continues as we visit another location with beautiful decorations and amazing landscaping. We're at Bonnet House Museum and Gardens tomorrow on SoFlo Health. We also visit Le Jardinet. It is the gardener, or it means the gardener, and it's in Miami Design District. It's a restaurant that is vegetable forward, meaning they focus on the veggies more than the proteins per se. And we even get a face toner made out of natural ingredients. Professor Produce talks to us about the pistachio, and there's so much more. It's all right here on SoFlo Health tomorrow at 1230 on Local 10. Thanks, Hunter. We'll definitely be watching. And to our viewers at home, we hope you enjoyed today's episode, and we'll see you again next week for another SoFlo Home Project right here on Local 10. And remember, there's no place like home. SoFlo Home. Next week on SoFlo Home Project, we explore an amazing home renovation that took advantage of stunning architecture features and water views. If you missed any part of this episode, or if you're looking for more design inspiration, make sure to check out all episodes online at SoFloHomeProject.com. You could also submit your own design disasters, and you never know, we could be knocking on your door to help. And don't forget to follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram.